Find out what's going on. Get involved. Change things from the inside. Make a difference. Take pride. Multicultural at its best. The Louisa Marshall Show. Coming up. All news seem to be the best. Get involved. On the show, a petition to BC Premier John Horgan. The Filipino community in BC calls for provincial government support towards the creation of a Filipino community center. Support for the introduction of Filipino language classes in public schools. And the appointment of MLA Mabel Elmore to cabinet. The only MLA of Filipino heritage elected for a fourth term to the legislature. Mabel has worked so hard for meaningful causes and policies across the province. We are lacking the much needed support from the government and it's about time for the community to get together, united to have one voice. Get ready to be involved. All these, coming up. Hello everybody, joining me today are two prominent members of the Filipino-Canadian community in Metro Vancouver. Community advocate and founder of Global Pinoy Diaspora Canada, Trini Lopez, and another community advocate, James Infante. So hey, how are you guys? Hi Luisa, thank you for having us today. How are you, James? Hi Luisa, I'm doing well, so lovely to see you. So how is COVID treating you, James? Well, you, you know, uh, it's, it's going all right. I, I'm thankful to say that my family is doing well, they're safe and healthy, um, but uh, uh, it's mostly been stuck here, working from home. Uh, luckily, I, I, I can do it safely, but uh, you know, go, going sometimes a little stir crazy, as you can imagine. I know you, you young people can go a little bit crazy, huh? So, James, tell me, um, do you wear a mask? Of course, certainly, yes. whenever I leave the house. You gotta be wearing a mask, keeping distance, and uh, being as safe as possible following all COVID-19 protocols. That's amazing, James. How about you, Trini? How are you doing in these COVID times? Oh, yes, as, uh, as you know, we're not, I'm not young anymore, so oh, of, gosh. <laughs> you know, what do they say? Um, we cannot be replaced, so we have to be careful in this kind of, in this pandemic. So yes, wearing masks, frequent hand washing, social distancing. So those are the things that we really have to keep in mind. Sometimes we, you know, lapse into something, but no, we have to always remember that we have to do that. It's for our sake and for everyone's sake. So it's not being selfish, you know, we want to be concerned about what others do. So what about you? Uh, oh, wow. Well, I, I, it's a good thing. I'm, I'm, well, I always wear the mask and right now, and you know what? It, it's just like other people's complaints, like, oh, they don't want to wear masks. They don't want to wear, they don't oh. want to social distance. And the thing is, this has gotten so long so long and it's going to be Christmas and now we are you know probably facing the possibility of a, an awful lockdown during mm -hmm. Christmas which we don't want so we just want everybody to stay safe and uh, follow the rules anyway this is going to be an exciting time uh, there is a big buzz right now that uh, the, 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 commu the community is the Filipino community is actually uh, doing the one of the biggest petitions of our lives right now <laughs> to have MLA Mabel Elmore to be a part of the provincial cabinet. So, uh, how important is it for us Filipino Canadians to have this representation, especially MLA Mabel Elmore? So, Trini, you've wow, you know, it's really about time for Mabel to be part of the cabinet. 
I remember, you know, during the earlier years, we have uh, one MP that's, uh, you know, in the federal. But basically, I think that's what we have before. Mabel is very important for British Columbia. We have a lot of Filipinos that live in British Columbia, around the Vancouver area, and to be represented on the table for the cabinet would be very important for us because, you know, it's just like when you're discussing something for the whole, for your, your family, so, you know, discuss about policy. So if you're sitting right there, you can bring out your concerns, your issues, like firsthand, not just, you know, after the meeting, you get the secondhand information. Right now, when we have Mabel on the cabinet, she can be a very effective person to talk about our issues, concerns of our community, and also the Filipino Canadian community, which, you know, she's part of. And uh, so I, I strong be strongly believe that she should be a very, very good uh, person to be part of the cabinet of this current administration for the NDP with Premier Horgan. So I'm rooting for her for that you know, position too. I, I, I believe it is time for Mabel to be appointed to cabinet um, because we need representation within uh, BC's cabinet uh, to look like the rest of our province. Mabel is the first and only MLA of Filipino heritage to be elected to uh, BC's legislature in 2009 was her first election and it was history making. And I think it's time for BC to make history once again and have her appointed as the first minister of Filipino heritage to BC's cabinet. It's important not only for our Kababayans, for young Filipinos like me to see ourselves reflected in the leadership of our province, but it's also important for all British Columbians. Mabel is one of the longest serving MLAs in the legislature. Um, she has served for over 12 years. She was the parliamentary secretary for poverty reduction. She served as the deputy chair for the treasury board. Um, she has the experience needed uh, to, to lead BC through this pandemic and to represent our Kababayans and British Columbians well. Okay, so now the second topic that I want to discuss with you guys is, <sighs> I'm sure Trini will be like, oh, <laughs> what's going on? But anyway, what do you say to having another Filipino community center, uh, Trini? I think it is fine because if this is something like a, a building, to be a sort of a for the Filipinos to become like a, a symbol, you know, for the community, then go for it. But with my experience in the past, um, we have to be very, very uh, careful in choosing the leadership that's going to be running the community center. So I'm all for it anytime as long as we have the credentials and the uh, capability of the people that's going to be running, you know, there's no personal agenda that's actually involved in it. There's no power trip or anything. And, and, and uh, make sure management of the money is very important because in my past experiences, luckily I was able to uh, uh, get out of the, uh, you know, the um, previous ones that we were building before. It was so frustrating and I was so disappointed because being involved with that for quite some time and then trying to uh, get an audit because I could not believe why we cannot go on, you know, when we have, you know, the building and everything and it still went down. Actually, I didn't really know what happened after I resigned in 2013. So because my concern, I keep asking for auditing the money and everything. I was going down the wall, not getting anything. So in frustration, just like my sister that uh, who was also a director uh, decided to resign. Uh, being part of that uh, center for a long time, the whole family was involved. And so it was a real disappointment for me not to have it, you know, for a lifetime. So it's just like more than 30 years since I came, they've been look, rooting for a community center. And what I wanted is not the big one, just something that we have, we can generate income so that we can make it much nicer. But I think there's so much embellishment, there's so much, you know, things that needed to be put into the center. So 
and you don't have the money so i guess that's a uh, it's doomed to fail we always want to learn from what happened from the bad experience we want to learn from that and we don't want that to ever happen again so what is your thoughts on having a filipino community center is it supposed to be big and why do you think we need that I do believe we, we, we need a Filipino community center, both for our community, for our Kababayan, but also to show British Columbians and uh, Canadians all across our country that the Filipino community is here, we're well represented, and we're an important part of the fabric of our society and, and our community, that we contribute greatly um, to, to uh, to Canada and the building of Canada, I, and 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 I do know I, I I was a young a young man. Some might say a young boy when some of these things were happening, um, and, and and I know I've heard the stories of of what has happened to um, many of our Kababayans who have uh, done the work of trying to get a community center off of the ground. It's not easy, and I know that the work that. Uh, you and others who have come before me um, it, it, it is important um, and has helped our community grow in understanding and raising the consciousness of the need of a community center, a place for us to celebrate culture, heritage, our language, to be in community with each other, to have a place that we can be proud of. Um, and so when you talk about the resources that are needed, I also think that the government should be supporting this call um, for our community to, uh, to, to, to create a community center. Other communities, the uh, South Asian community, the Jewish community has had support from the BC government and the federal government. It's time to have that same support for the Filipino community. That's right. And I, hey. and I, I totally agree with, with James. Hey. Of course, I really still agree that we can have a community center where everybody can convene uh, enjoy the company of everybody, but very, very important is how you are going to manage it and, you know, make sure the right people are going to be there and, and the support of the community. That's very, very important. And so I'll be the very first one. James, I'm banking on you and the younger group because, you know, from all the experiences, you have all this information now, so go for it. We'll be back. Don't go away. Third petition, uh, Filipino languages to be introduced in public schools. Uh, okay. James, I have. <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I think James already know me, right, James? You know? That's uh, right. That's I had right. to do all those faces <laughs> instead of me talking because sometimes something will come out of my mouth and it's not good. Anyway, for me, the Philippines is a nation of over a hundred dialects. So if that will be introduced in public schools, what Filipino language should be taught? Um, James? That's a great, a great and important question. Um, you know, for many of our Kababayans, we have, uh, a as you say, uh, uh, over a hundred languages, languages all across the many islands of the Philippines. Um, and, and I think what, what, what's important here is understanding the use of having uh, Tagalog and, and uh, particularly Tagalog, but uh, of course, Filipino uh, recognized in schools. And the goal of that is to ensure that uh, for the majority, for many of our young uh, uh, Filipinos that are coming to Canada and settling in Vancouver and uh, in BC across the province, that they have the opportunity to be recognized for their language skills. As many of us know, there is a requirement as a part of the BC curriculum to have a second language. 
and for many others who immigrate to BC and uh, to the lower mainland, um, but, but, but across the province, their language is recognized. Uh, for example, Farsi is a recognized language in the North Vancouver School District. We have Spanish and French, uh, Mandarin, Cantonese, as many of the languages, Punjabi as another, uh, many of the languages that are recognized. And so uh, for the young people that have the second language and multi-language skills, uh, their, their uh, abilities are recognized. But for our Kababayans, for many of our young Filipino students, their language is not recognized. And the goal of having Tagalog and Filipino in schools is to recognize that so that they too are afforded the same access and uh, right to using their second language as a, a credit and as a way of uh, obtaining uh, what they need uh, as a requirement in, in our school system. Hmm. Hmm. Interesting. You just changed my mind, <laughs> James. No, it's, that, 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 see? no <laughs> it, 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 it's interesting to hear that from young people. So Trini, what's your take on it? Well, actually, that's a, a different perspective from uh, from James. Yes, I, my, I like it. Yes, as Louisa mentioned, um, you said something about you can teach your children. But you know, one of the things that I learned all these years is that if you really want to learn Filipino or Tagalog or, or whatever, you know, uh, language in the family, it should start when the kids are young because they will pick it up quickly. And once they go to school, they will, you know, learn the English language, no problem. What I really want, if that's possible, is that instead of the Filipino language being taught, because I know how hard it is even for myself to um, learn if you want to go to the real Filipino and because, you know, with our, di uh, with all so many dialects, um, it's, it's a bit difficult. Um, what I learned is that you, when, when you start with young kids, as I mentioned, they learn quite fast. And so what I wanted for the school or to be added in the curricula is that why don't they teach the Filipino culture uh, instead of just the language, talk about the Philippines. Uh, so other, you know, they will learn about us and that will be better. Because I attended a couple of, I think, uh, classes taught at the Cedar Cottage uh, with Christine. And I'm so impressed because they have the young kids. And so what they were teaching basically are for the young kids. So those that have never actually learned Filipino at home with her, their parents or their Lola, that's a good start for those who never ever, you know, know those because once they were born, very typical for us Filipinas when I know when I came here, um, the mom, all of us talk to the kids in English. So that's what they, they learn right away, right? But, you know, later on in during the, you know, now that I'm learning so much, I said to my friends those, uh, or young parents when they have their children, you know, start talking in Filipino or, or Tagalog or even your own dialect because they will learn fast. And once they go to school, they learn, you know, English and, and so at home they can still communicate. So there's no need to really go into a, you know, um, to study Filipino. But I would prefer very much that if we teach, you know, the culture as part of the culture and, and that includes language too. So that would be something that I would prefer rather than the Tagalog because we, if we ever have the uh, Filipino center again, uh, I think that can be taught with the young kids. Those that never ever have any idea, you know, um, about Filipino. So that's where they can start learning if you really want to have the Filipino in the curricula. As I said, again, I would like to emphasize, I would prefer our culture to be taught in the, uh, you know, in school. So, so that that's they, the culture, language and culture. Everything. I think this is why I think it's really important that we have, uh, you know, Filipino in schools, because I, I, I agree with everything that's been said that uh, Tagalog learning Filipino needs to start at home, needs to start by parents passing down their language yeah. to their children. 
But it also uh, uh, it, it is not just about learning the particular language. Tichitrini, you're right that, uh, that uh, when you learn language, you have to be able to learn culture and food and traditions. And uh, this is why it's so important when you have other languages, Spanish, uh, uh, French, uh, you know, these languages, you get to learn about different ways of life. And that is exactly why I think we need Filipino in schools, because it also allows us as, as Filipinos to show ourselves to the world. And uh, it's not only to help many of the young Filipinos coming here from the Philippines to have their accreditation, their language skills recognized. It's also an opportunity for Filipino Canadians to have their voices heard in our education system. James, I love you. <laughs> love you too, love you too. It, that, that's awesome, that's really awesome. But you see, this is such a great, I wish we can have all day to talk about this. This is so amazing. Let's do this all the time. I, so James, I think it's a good conversation. It is. I, I see your perspective, but I still feel that, you know, uh, instead of putting so much money, I think it's, it's better for us, for the culture, because everything will be, in, you know, included. Yeah, included. yeah, included, included in there. Yeah. And uh, but but you know the way James uh, put it out, I, yes, I you know, yes, that's a just passionate about the language. I love it. I yes. love it. I love it. I love it. I love it. But anyway, it's such a, a insightful and and very uh, wow educational. I get educated by James and in more from and you too, uh, Trini, as 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 always. Uh, thank you so much for joining me uh, to get this. Uh, petition over to to our government to our premier john horgan so we hope that uh, he listens to us and uh, we hope that the filipino community can get together and and really do a great thing as the, you know a little bit united this time i think it's about time right so it, this will be cool and good luck of course to mla mabel elmore we're rooting for you so hopefully you get into the cabinet. So thank you so much, James. James thank Infante, you. thank you very much. Trini Lopez. Thank, thank you, you too. Thank oh, you, thank you. Thank you very thank much. You. Oh, you guys are so amazing. Okay. We'll see you again. Yes. Bye. Welcome to Relive the Music, a brand new one-of-a-kind show that takes the audience through music history, trivia, and memories of the 50s and 60s.
so disappointed to announce today that BCNDP government ignored the Filipino community again. We want to get this message to Premier John Horgan that you have done it for the second time. You have once again ignored the plea and the petition of the Filipino community to include our beloved Mabel Elmore. And for this, our community needs a legitimate explanation why you have ignored us and ignored Mabel for the second time. You owe this to all the Filipino Canadians who voted and supported the BC NDP all these years. Thank you all for watching. Hope you enjoy the show. Please follow us on Facebook and Instagram. Please don't drink and drive. Don't text and drive. Always be kind. Let's stop bullies and the coronavirus. Please wash your hands. Wear a mask. Stay safe. Um, See you next week. Bye-bye. Thank you.